all right so that happened pretty fast just wanted to make another video to show these are kind of complete this one for sure is i can only fit these two on here this one i actually have room to put another coil and i was gonna put a quad clock on one board to where i can actually push the flux in a circle with this one um you know my area is a little messy been real busy with this thing 16 get i wish i'd have probably went with uh 20 gauge this is really hard to wind i didn't get as many wraps as i wanted i had to actually remove some i started with 110 i didn't have enough room for all this to fit and still have no air gap right here so just wanted to explain a little bit about what's going on here so these are very strong mag this was dangerous putting this together it was very dangerous because it's probably i think these magnets claim to have uh, like 170 pounds of pull force just on one pole without and there's two of them back there there's two in there and then i added these for just so it would fit and for extra strength um, it's probably about 600 pounds total when you include that it's both poles pull and it sucks in there hard It almost pinched the ends of my gloves off, but this one wasn't as bad It's got a little bit smaller of a magnet in there, but and by the way, I know it's right by my computer This has got solid-state drives in it and not only that, but we don't have to worry about that because When there's a magnet inside this core and this is one of the things beard and tested rigorously is that and I can do it I don't, There's my scissors so the magnet sticks out just a little bit but you can see there there's not there's not a lot of magnetic field this scissor i mean most of the magnetic flux is stuck and trapped inside that core this one's even more so because the the magnets further in there so but yeah there's very little flux that's left and there's a little air gap you can't have no air gap but that little air gap will let some magnetism out but you can even see it right there a little light but so there's not and look at this there's not any magnetic field on the top anywhere it's all trapped in the core inside those little micron layers and one thing um, so you can get on Chinese websites and order these cores a lot cheaper but just keep in mind just because it says it's the same course says it says it's AMC 320 doesn't mean that's what you're getting unless you're in that warehouse from China and you know where it's shipping from who i mean you don't know if it's coming from Hitachi metals or where it's coming from the reason i like mouser is because they give you a certificate that proves and guarantees that everything you buy from them comes from where they say it does so that's why i ordered from them this core was 124 dollars i think when i bought it this one the prices went up to about 29 dollars. and by the way this is the amc c 0025 that's this little core they actually have some smaller ones and they have a bunch of different sizes it doesn't i don't think the size is going to matter as much it's just as far as you're going to have to figure out how to fit all that stuff in there um, this one was very tight this one i actually had to remove windings as well to get everything to fit and that's why it's taped because there's it's still wanting to kind of separate because the everything i stuffed in there but so just wanted to talk a little about this effect because that's where a lot of people get confused so Thomas Bearden figured out, and this was like 30, 40 years ago, that Aronoff bomb, there was two people, they discovered it's called the Aronoff bomb effect. You can look this up. There's over 20,000 pages in the literature on it. Uh, you're not going to find it. You can Google it. It's not. You, you ain't going to learn all about it on Wikipedia. I promise you, you're going to have to read all the papers to figure out what they're talking about. But they discovered it with this. This is a toroidal coil. It's not exactly the same thing. But So what they did is they wound a coil around an iron core just like this except it's very 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 tight there's no real spaces in between there and when they did that they noticed that the magnetic field was trapped inside it didn't spill out into space and they had this well-known effect they they also measured extra energy actually outside the core radiating in from the environment that's because the magnetic field is pulled inside it's kind of complicated but you can read the papers it's there um, they do this in quantum mechanics. They do a lot of little experiments with it. They, I, I don't really know what all they do, but I know that they, they do little experiments with particles in here because the way it holds it in there. But nobody has ever used this effect in energy. And that's what I am trying to do here, and that's exactly what Bearden did. 
You, this is the same effect, except with that one, you got to pay for it. You got to put energy in to get it. Right now, that effect's happening in right now for free, basically, other than you having to pay for the magnets and the material. Because a magnet, a permanent magnet, is a dipole. That's what it is. That's actually the same thing a generator makes inside, except it uses coils and and when it spins the crank, it creates the dipole. That's how you generate electricity. It's the same thing. So that's why you could have motors and little generators like uh, windmills. They use permanent magnets. It's a lot more efficient because you don't destroy the dipole. You don't have to create it to destroy it. It's already created with the magnet. And I had, where did it go? I had a, here we go. I wanted to talk about that for a second. Talk about magnets. Because a lot of people, they got them stuck to their refrigerator. They're holding stuff. So this is one that I've had bolted together opposite poles. So it's repelling here. Um, this is a stainless bolt. I had them squeezed together very tight. Um, and I, I separated them just to play with it a little bit. It's interesting because even though they're rep repelling, stuff will get sucked in there really hard. It's almost like it cancels out some of the field here and it's all focused in here. But uh, I've tested this and this has been bolted together for a year. There's no loss in magnetic field. It's just neodymium iron boron discs. There's no loss in the field. So that's the big question. So how is it that you can take a chunk of metal with iron cobalt or neodymium iron and boron you cast it and you zap it that's all they do it to make a magnet they zap it with a very strong field an electric field it aligns all the atoms and then there's this magical field that's ever present and even they say themselves these magnets can be magnetized indefinitely so let's let's reflect on that for a second so that means I can take this apart and I could stick this to a metal I beam by the way, iron workers or any anybody that does material handling, there's something called a magnetic lifting device. It's what it is is it's a uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it has a switch. It has a switch. It'll come to me in a second, but it has a switch to turn it on and off. And you can pick up material with them. And you can pick up a lot of material like 1000 pounds, 2000 pound weight limits, it hooks to a crane. You can uh, move stuff around with it. So let's think about that. How does that work? They, they've been around for 30 years. Same one, still working. No power, no energy needed. How does that work? How does it still work? So back to the, the simple point, I stick this to a beam and I stick, I don't know, let's say, I think these are rated to hold like 40 or 50 pounds each. So let's, let's stick 40 pounds to it. Let's stick it on an I-beam, 40 pounds, and let's leave it there for five years. So it'll still be there, right? A lot of those magnets that have the switches, the lifting magnets, they've been in service for 30, 40 years and they still work. They still have the same limits. They still pick up the same metal. So, in other words, they're not being reduced. If The reduction is like 1% every 100 years or something, so it's negligible. It's not much at all. So how does that happen? Where is the energy coming from? It's not coming from... It's not a battery. That's not a battery. It doesn't store that energy in there. The energy is coming from the environment. A magnet actually warps the field that permeates everything around it. That's what you're seeing in a ferro cell. It's what causes the attraction like that. I mean, think about that for a second. You think the energy used to create a magnet is in that magnet for a thousand years and is just just happens to, to be able to do more work than the actual energy used to create the magnet? Because you could hang this 40, 50 pounds from an I-beam. Let's do it for five years to keep it simple. The energy used to create this isn't, it wouldn't hold that weight for 30 minutes, let alone a year or two. Where's the energy coming from? I'm not, you know, I kind of explained a little bit of it, but you just think about that. Think about that for a while. Because everybody should, because this is probably the most missed science field there is, is permanent magnets. I mean, been playing with them for thousands and thousands of years. They're called lodestones. That's when most of them were discovered. But anyway, just wanted to show you all these. Um, now I'm going to have to build the circuit board. That's going to take a while. You're looking at between these two, it's about probably $500, not including the 3D printer, not including the hours that it took to get the spools right, get them tight, get them fitted. And that, that is including the copper and the, and the magnets and the cores. Is this, yeah, 120, about 30 bucks now. So, 
But anyway, I'll uh, keep it updated. I can't wait to especially get this one because this one was very strong. And I'm going to have to pulse it with some high amperage. That's why I use this heavy wire. Not really trying to transform power. I mean, I want a little bit higher so I can reduce it down with a filter. Which I'm going to filter it just with a big capacitor. And then I'm going to send it to a buck or something like that. Convert it and use it in the power I want to use. Even if I don't close loop it, you could still... Once we get there, we get the effects. Uh, J.D. Nodlin uh, did a good replication. He was an electrical engineer with a PhD. He did one with just this core. You can look it up. Uh, it's, on, it's still on the internet. He's got a website. He's got the diagrams. He's even got the circuitry he used, but he didn't He didn't input very much power. His uh, clock board that he used, I think it was only, it was pushing milliamps, but it was, I, I can't remember without looking at it, but I can post, I'll try to find a link and post it under this video after I edit it later, but uh, or at least edit the uh, the description. I don't edit any of my videos. I don't care if you like or subscribe. I really don't. I'm not doing this for money. I, I got a good job. I make plenty of money. So I just do this to try to help others and get you know get a little hope. Now if you're if you're just kind of YouTube searching free energy or and then you dig into this topic and you found out about the Meg, but you don't know a whole lot about electrical engineering or electrical theory. You're you're gonna have to. I mean, you're probably not gonna understand a lot of this, so you're gonna need to start reading some books. There's lots of good literature on it. I would suggest going back to about the nineteen thirties to nineteen fifties. That's when electrical engineering was still in its more primitive state, and that was right around the right around before it started getting modified. Okay, so and it did. It did get modified. Like Charles Proteus Steinmetz's book I referenced in a previous video. That's one that wasn't. And a lot of students know his name. They know about him, but they don't know. They never heard anything about his books or his equations. There's equations in there that are three pages long that's never been worked out. I mean, I'm dead serious. You can look at the book. It, it, they're all there. I mean, it, it's absolutely incredible. But So, and another, another thing about this. All we're doing, so there's a magnet here. The flux is in there. You're pulsing. All we're doing is moving this field to one side and the other. We're just pulsing it back and forth. It's similar to a shake flashlight. Those old ones you would shake up and you would be able to turn it on and charge the battery. You're doing the same thing with this, except the magnet has a field that's already there and it always recovers. So you can pulse it over. You pulse the field over and when this is dead, okay, there's a, there's a lag, but the field will pop back. And that's the collection off of that, because any change in flux gives you energy through a coil. So you're collecting off the press this way in this coil, and then the pop back and, and a little bit of both coils. And also, the, any input coil is also an output coil, so you have to... It, it gets a little complicated in the circuitry, but, I mean, it's not, it's not that complicated. If you study this long enough and look into it, you can figure out a way to do it. Even if you may not fully understand it yet, you, you could probably get it working so, alright, that's it for today. Peace.